short video today because this server is rather uninteresting. It was really cheap, so whatever. Obviously, we've got a super micro server here. It's got a sticker that says TVS on it, but it's like not even aligned properly, so I don't know. But this is a really standard Supermicro 502 case, very common with a few of their models, very often reused by servers. I've even done a video on an old Sophos antivirus filter that used this. Different motherboard, but very similar case. Yeah, it's a really standard 1U case, very small. It has advantages and disadvantages, which we'll see. It's great for the included board because the cutout for the I IO is exactly just for this board, pretty much. I mean, it's got some options for different variants of the same board. You can't use this thing for anything else, really, unless you have super micro boards that happen to line up with these exact ports. It uses a standard Flex ATX power supply, very common in 1U servers. It's non redundant, it's pretty low wattage. I think it's like 200 watts or something. I thought this was interesting because it came with a NIC installed, because there's two gigabit ethernet ports on this and it came with another NIC so I was like oh okay whatever another gigabit port but as you'll see card is clearly not a NIC because it's got a little asterisk logo asterisk is an open source PBX that's been around for a long time I've never personally used it because by the time I started building servers and stuff I had no need for a home line it's used everywhere and a lot of people use it at home for uh, voice over IP applications this particular card is the TE 121 wild card from Digium incorporated single span pci express card when i first pulled this out i was like oh wait why are there so many ic's why are there infineon ic's on this thing and like cplds or pld's and all sorts of like random stuff and then i noticed all these fuses on the rj45 connector it's got the little asterisk logo so i knew it was something related to voice over ip this is actually a t1 slash e1 line card which brings back memories when i was a boy the t1 line was almost like a meme everyone just wanted like oh i want to get a t1 line in my house if i was rich it's a whole 1.544 megabits per second install the t1 line in my house always at my pc double clicking on my miss house your home adsl connection or cable connection was garbage in comparison when i finally got adsl it was three megabit I mean, it wasn't symmetrical, but hey, it was pretty fast. And T1 lines, I suppose they're still around. Even a small business use, I don't think they really get much use anymore because you can just get normal voice over IP solutions and stuff like that. I did notice that, see if I get the light just right, it says forest run. They did put a little Easter egg on this card. I, I don't know if they put run forest run, like underneath the jack and you just can't see it, but... All I can see is Forest Run. I thought that was pretty cute. You don't see many Easter eggs on, uh, you know, relatively high-end specialized hardware like this. Apparently this thing still sells for like 150 bucks. So I will gladly throw this on eBay and have someone buy it. Because I sure as hell don't need it. And that is way more than what I paid for the server. This whole server was like 45 bucks with shipping or something. As for the rest of the system, it came with a 160 gigabyte Western Digital Blue two and a half inch hard drive. By the way, this came from a recycling company. Generally, the way recycling companies work is businesses will give them their old hardware. They sanitize all the data, sometimes even requiring just complete destruction of drives. They don't even let you resell them. They have to just be removed and destroyed. That's why so often when you buy stuff on eBay, they have no drives. This one didn't get erased properly. This one is littered with files. And what do you think the most common file on this thing was? Wave files. Why are there wave files? Because it's a phone system and it's all of this company's voicemails. <laughs> it's some mortgage company or like reverse home mortgage scam or something like that. I don't know. Moving back to the rest of the computer. 3Y power technology, power supply, like I said, 200 watts. And it's a standard uh, Flex ATX. It's an older power supply design. They don't have the proper 24 pin connector. It's only the 20 pin. And they don't have uh, anything like PCI Express they just have some Molex SATA. At least it's got a SATA connector. 
So it's perfectly good for this system. So this particular motherboard is a Supermicro X7 SLA-H, which is a pretty basic Atom motherboard powered by the uh, 330, which is a dual core, I think it's 1.6 gigahertz chip. It's got a couple 8X PCI Express slots, one 32-bit PCI slot, and two memory slots. It's got one, I think it's only one gig of RAM installed. Yep, one gig PC 6400 DDR2. Unfortunately, these systems, the real limitation of these older Atom systems is that they only support, uh, I think, four gigs on most of the models. So regardless of how big the memory you add to it, you're just limited by the architecture of the CPU. They're very stripped down and they're quite slow. Don't get me wrong, this would be great for PFSense router. 30 bucks, dual core, you know, low power, it's got a fan, although I am kind of thinking this fan is like barely below the case. Dual Intel Gigabit Nix, doesn't have remote management or anything like that, but yeah, simple enough. You can even add like 10 gig networking or something to it because it does have PCI Express slots, which are unfortunately only 8x. Correction, I mentioned that these were Intel Nix, they're not, they're Realtek Nix, which kind of sucks because PFSense Historically, wasn't great with Realtek, although I think they're at the point now that these uh, older ones are pretty, pretty solid with their drivers. This slot is actually a 4X electrically, and this one's an 8X. It's kind of funny, they actually use 8X slots for both of them, which is a little unusual. They usually uh, don't even, you know, you get the physical slot, but there's only electrical contacts. It's probably just cheaper to just keep ordering them. This board is pretty standard for the time. It's got four SATA ports, parallel ATA, which is, you know, okay. And that's about it. I mean, it's not a very interesting board. It's not a very interesting server, but they are pretty cheap. By the way, this is considered a flex ATX motherboard, not a micro ATX board. It's actually just a flex one, which I think is Supermicro's own branding. I know they make a few boards that use this form factor, but it's pretty standard. It fits in a normal case that uh, can handle, you know, one size bigger than an ITX board. You can make this into a really low power NAS, put in just a standard uh, HBA and uh, SAS card and get a whole bunch of drives that way and, you know, slow CPU, but it'll work. Either way, maybe I'll uh, make a little bit of profit off this one. And uh, I'm going to resell this board too, because it's more of a, an impulse buy that was a good price. So I didn't really need this board either, but I can probably sell it for more than I got the original server for, especially if it's like tested and throw on some more memory. 